Yo, what's up everybody? This is Joshua Casper and welcome to another Ableton Live video tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make this clean guitar rig uh, audio effect rack that I just put together. The main purpose of this tutorial is to show you how to use the amplifier and the cabinets together like they're supposed to be. That's just the way the real world works, so that's the way Ableton made them. They're supposed to go together, the amplifier, then the cabinet system. So I'm going to show you principally how to set that up and I'm also going to show you how to just put everything together into a nice rack. If I just play this right now, I've just got the basic guitar from the PAX, Ableton Live, guitar, bass, sounds. I've just got the um, guitar clean, just that guitar ADG plugged in here, and this is what it sounds like before the rack. <laughs> And now I'm going to play that and I'm going to switch on the rack so you can hear what we're doing here. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so essentially what we have is an amplifier running into a cabinet system with some effects behind it. And inside of the cabinet system we have a microphone that's close and we have a microphone that's far away. And the far away microphone has four 12 inch speakers and it's a condenser microphone and the microphone that's close to us is one 12 inch speaker and it's dynamic. So um, if we hover over this and then look over to the left where the info view is, it can tell us about the different microphones. We have dynamic and we have condenser. So dynamic mics are a bit grittier and commonly used when close miking. And uh, condenser mics are more accurate and are more commonly used for miking in the distance. So that's what we're looking for here. We're gonna set up uh, the near microphones and the far microphones. And we're gonna go ahead and do that. Everything inside of the tutorial Wrap that up with an amplifier and some effects on the end just to make it sound really nice. So let's go ahead and get started. What I'm going to do is just duplicate this channel and I'm going to come in and delete the box. And of course the box is already done and completed and ready for download on the website. So if you're looking just to check it out and maybe kind of compare your finished product with mine, that's probably the best thing to do just to see how things are going. First thing we need to do is set up the cabinet system. And the way we're going to do that, we're going to do that inside an audio effects rack. So I'm going to come into an audio effects rack and bring that in here. And I already have a dry wet system set up. But if we come into the chain here, you can see how the, the system is set up. And that's perfectly fine. But instead of dry wet, we're going to just change that name to near and far. Okay, and if you want to learn how to make this rack, uh, it's very simple. You just need to go to my website and search for dry wet effects rack. And I'll obviously leave a link on the blog as well if you want to go find it. But all I've done here is inserted two chains and then inside of the chain selector, you probably have to click this, I've just moved over this one lane to go from one instead of zero. You can see that it's moved over from zero to one to 127. And then I've added a ramp to it to, to go up. And then on the second chain here, I've brought it all the way over to 126, not 127 and put the ramp to go all the way up here. And what that does is when it's all the way over here, we're not getting any signal from this chain, but as the chain selector moves over, we get chains, uh, we get more signal here. And when it's all the way over to the right, we get no uh, nothing from the far and it's just the near, okay? So now we have to just go ahead and add some cabinets to these chains. I'm gonna take a cabinet, put it one on the near, I'm gonna take another cabinet and put it on the far. And I can go ahead and hide the chains. And on this near one, we're gonna use one by 12. Great, near, on axis or off axis, doesn't really matter. I don't notice too much of a difference, but you might. And we're also gonna use a dynamic microphone. We're gonna keep it on mono, that's fine. On the far, we're gonna use a four by 12 system, four, uh, four speakers, four 12 inch speakers, sorry. And we're gonna put it on far, which means it's gonna be processed as if the microphones are far away from the sound coming out of the amplifier. We're gonna leave it on condenser, mono, 100%, perfect. 
Now, the next thing we need to do, if we come into the map here, right now we have the chain selector map from 0 to 127, which is great. We also want to map the stereo field for these microphones. You can do it with the volume, but it's a little more involved. So what I'm going to do is actually just use the panning system, and then when we move around from uh, far to near on the macro knob, it will actually kind of give the brain the perception of moving from near to far, and you'll see how that is. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and map to dry wet and map to dry wet and while we're here let's go ahead and rename near far you could also call it cabinet system or something and here on the near mixer we're going to go to 40 left and we're going to go to center Oops. and on the far we're going to go from center to 39 and that one little um, point range right here that one from 39 to 40 actually adds a lot more psycho acoustic sensation that the the, the the sound is going from near to far so let's go ahead and check that out see what it sounds like now so essentially we're all the way over at a far microphone here and here we're over at just that that one speaker at a near microphone Pretty cool, right? I'm actually going to switch these the way it was before the first one. Cool. And the next thing we're going to do is throw an amplifier in front of it. And I'm just actually going to take the clean amplifier. And I'm going to just make some quick modifications here. On this gain, I'm just going to put it to, to 5. Volume, I'm going to put it to 6. And dry, wet. I think I'm going to put it at 50 just to start. Presence, I'm going to put at 5. Treble, I'm going to put at 6. And bass, 5.5. So as I'm shutting these off and turning them on, you can hear what the difference is. So if I turn off the amplifier and just leave the cabinet system, if I turn off the cabinet system, well, actually, put, let's put this in the middle. Now, if I turn off the cabinet system, this is what it sounds like. And when I turn on the cabinet system, you can hear something's going on, but you really don't know what's going on. And that is really going to stand out when we add the amplifier. So if I turn on the amplifier, turn off the cabinet system, this is what the sound would sound like. And if I turn on the cabinet system now, you can see that it, it evens it out because it's, it's processing that audio as if it's in a different place in space. So the distortion is really kind of cut down a lot. Isn't that cool? I like to put it right about in the middle, and that's the way I like to save the preset, and that way I can move to where I want to go when I'm actually making the, the mix. So that's pretty sweet, and some other things I did were was just really kind of drop some presets on the end to make it sound kind of nice. I put a limiter at the very end, uh, you know, just so no clipping ever happens. I also took the EQ8 instrument preset for, I think, Electronic Guitar 1, and I drop that after the cabinet system. And as you can see, it just kind of rolls that off, dips it down in, the, in these two peaks, which I think sounds really nice. And the last thing I did, just to give it a nice kind of sheen to it, was uh, added a little reverb. I think bright room is the way to go. I put that after the EQA, kind of the last thing in the, the, devi the device chain. And that way, um, it sounds all pretty nice. And I actually turned it way down to something like 30, I think it was. And the last thing we'd want to do is come in and take everything from the amplifier to the limiter, right-click and group, 
and then we'd want to come in and kind of map some some effects here and the what I would do was I would just take the dry wet to eight treble to seven middle to six bass to five and then I'd re put those in 5.5 whoops 5.5 five six seventy five percent and I would map the near far to the cabinet so you could right click just cabinets that's fine um, I would also EQ8 the scale of that EQ just in case we wanted to get rid of it, kind of even it out, we could do that at 0%, but still be rolling off that sub bass line and that really, really kind of nasty tight uh, top end. So we'd map that scale and leave it at 100 for now. Cabinets, I don't know, somewhere around 50. And that big room would be over that bright room reverb, something like that, 25%. Rename, reverb dry, wet. And the limiter, I would just put the, the gain on there. And just leave it as gain and put it at zero. And there you go. That's a really nice... Uh, guitar effects rack for clean sounding guitar. I think it sounds really good. Sorry I kind of sped through it a lot, but uh, if you go to the blog, the blog has a long article about what is happening here and why, and it, I really highly suggest you read it, and obviously go download it and share, like, subscribe, comment, you know the drill. But anyway, I hope you learned something, and I hope you're using this stuff, and we will see you next time. Peace.